Hi there. We started this aquaponics project seven years ago, and it's virtually been unchanged for the last five years. About that time when we put this together, I had another friend that we put together an aquaponics system for her. Uh, recently, one of her bulkheads developed a leak, and it rotted out the bottom of the bed. So I thought it was time that we take a look at ours and maybe upgrade it a bit. Uh, the prognosis is a lot worse than I thought. Um, we're starting to get some bulging where the wood is starting to rot under the bulkheads. We're getting a little rotting along the sides. And our enclosure for the fish uh, tank, the tub, is completely useless. It's taking up more room. So we have just today decided that we are going to redesign the entire project. Uh, we're going to uh, try this project. I'm going to try fiberglass this time. And we're also going to try to make it a little lower, make it a little more accessible, and just flow a little bit better on the pergola than it does right now. So we're going to start uh, with the demolition. We're actually going to remove this bed today and we're going to remove the enclosure above the fish tank. Uh, this enclosure here was uh, to keep basically animals out that you know may, might wander in here, cats, squirrels, keep them away from the fish tank. Uh, however, it takes up a lot of room and it is, well, it's falling apart and I do need to redesign this entire thing so Today, this is gold. Before we break down the bed, we remove the clay pellets. You can see in the images how rot built up on the exposed wood. The liner lasted five years, but it couldn't prevent exposure at the bulkheads, bell siphon, and weep holes. We scooped out the clay pellets, rinsing them in a food grade barrel we cut in half. We drilled holes for drainage and then stored the pellets in the standard food grade barrels. With the bed removed, I took apart the stand. At this point, we removed the framework from around the fish pond and we moved the fish to a blue barrel in the corner. I set up a DIY filter for the fish and we'll take the pond out back and paint the exterior. We will remove the second bed and prepare the space for the new grow bed. The basic construction is a rectangular box on a stand. The holes you see line up on the frame and supports are for the plumbing. In the previous design, the plumbing between the beds and the pond was a confusion of piping. The new plumbing will be streamlined and supported, making it cleaner and easier for repairs if needed. One end of the bed cantilevers over the fish pond. I'll put a bell siphon and the weep hole on this end and the fill pipe on the other. With just one bed, we can move the system out into the space. This provides easy access for the grow bed and the pond, takes up less floor space, and still provides about the same amount of growth space as the two separate beds did. I will give fiberglass a try because it will provide a watertight seal for a wood grow bed. But I wanted to try out the process and work with the product before applying it to the new bed. I built a corner of a box so I could test the two kinds of fiberglass available. There's a cloth fiberglass and a matte fiberglass. You apply both types the same way, using a mix of resin and hardener to adhere the product to the wood. I place one of the strips of cloth fiberglass I cut earlier against the corner and tuck it into the seams. I also cut the cloth at the corner so it lays flat against the surface. Then I apply a layer of resin mix over the cloth and use a spreader to tuck it and smooth. I do the same to the bottom seam and then apply cloth to the side of the box followed by a coat of resin, then smooth with the spreader. Next I try a matte fiberglass. 
I'm looking for the easiest cloth to work with here since both will provide a watertight seal for the grow bed. Right away I have an issue with the mat. It shreds. It didn't get any better so I went with the fiberglass cloth. I used acetone to prep the wood for the first application of fiberglass. The acetone cleans the wood, getting rid of any oils or residue. You don't need much, just dampen a cloth and wipe down the surface. Remember, don't use vinyl gloves when using acetone. If you do want to use gloves, they need to be acid resistant, like rubber gloves. Once the wood is prepped, we move on to the first application of fiberglass. As with the test run, I'll start with the corners. But first, I cut strips of fiberglass, measuring out manageable lengths. The fiberglass comes in a roll. I will cut the strips for the corners first, making sure the pieces are large enough to cover the area and allow for overlap as I add more pieces, but not so large that they're difficult to manage. I'm using a sharp pair of household scissors that will not be used for anything else. Keep the cloth taut, but don't stretch it. You want as little pressure on the strands as possible while cutting to minimize the fray. The cloth is cut and I put on a protective coverall. I start with the corners, spreading the resin mix with a chip brush. I'm using a product from 3M called Bondo Fiberglass Resin, and the can comes with a tube of hardener. Using the manufacturer's directions, I calculate how many drops I need of the hardener per measurement of resin. You can use a glass or a silicon container to measure out your resin. Then you pour the resin into a separate container. In this case, we're using a red Solo cup. Now we add the drops. Counting out carefully. and stir using a small wooden dowel or similar utensil. Make up the resin mix in small quantities, one batch at a time as needed. The resin sets up quickly and becomes difficult to spread. Apply the resin mix to the surface. Add a strip of fiberglass and smooth into the resin. Using a radius roller, Tuck the cloth into the seam. Apply the resin mix to the cloth with the brush, which isn't as easy as it sounds. Work slowly, smoothing outward from the corner. Using a slotted padded roller helps eliminate bubbles, pockets of air trapped in the resin. Continue tucking and rolling until the cloth is smooth against the surface of the grow bed. All four corners of the inside of the grow bed are now covered in fiberglass. The next step is to cover the seams and as with the corners, I start with a coat of resin, lay down a length of fiberglass cloth, tuck it into the seam, brush on the resin, and smooth outward. I'll work my way around the bed, installing the fiberglass to all the seams. Now I want to fill in the body of the bed and the strips need to be wider. When I apply these strips, I want to make sure I overlap the edges of the already installed fiberglass in the corners and along the seams. It's the same process, though smoothing the length of cloth is challenging. Once the cloth is adhering to the wood, work along the side, taking care not to pull the cloth or let it shift. I fill the bottom of the interior using the same method. A coat of resin mix, position the cloth, smooth, and apply another coat of resin mix. And continue to spread smooth and blend. 
An important part of the fiberglass process is sanding. This takes down the imperfections and readies the surface for the next coat. For every layer of fiberglass you add, you need to sand down the surface. I'm not including fiberglass in the next layer though. I'm just adding a layer of resin mix. This reinforces the seal the fiberglass provides and adds another layer of protective coating over the surface. Like I did with the inside of the bed, I started by wiping down the surface with acetone. I applied a layer of fiberglass and then a layer of resin. For the outside, I'm going to fiberglass the area with the bulkheads and the corners. And these are the areas that are most likely to develop leaks. The fiberglass will reduce that risk. I used several tools and supplies for this project so far. Of course the rolls of fiberglass and one roll is more than I need. For supplies, I needed the resin and hardener and the containers in which to mix the resin, solo cups and other means of holding the resin mix during application, acetone for cleaning, disposable gloves, both vinyl and rubber, and disposable rags or cloths, and chip brushes. They're disposable brushes you can buy in bulk. I also used rollers and inexpensive roller brushes. Be sure to purchase the roller brushes used for epoxy and fiberglass application. You'll need masks and protective coveralls, also known as bunny suits, a pair of scissors that won't be used for anything else, and the fiberglass tools I used are a radius roller, slotted paddle rollers, one large, one small, and spreaders. I also used a small utility knife and acid shop brushes. These brushes stand up to acetone so you can use them to clean tools as needed. We apply a layer of fiberglass to the interior of the grow bed, followed by a coating of resin without the fiberglass. The wood box is strong enough on its own to hold the clay pellets and the water it runs through. What we need here was waterproofing. Without the waterproofing, the exposed wood rots. For the outside of the grow bed, I added fiberglass on the corners, along the seams, and in the area where I'll drill for the bulkhead and bell siphon. I then added a coat of resin over the entire exterior. I lined the original beds with pond liner, but then I drilled for the bulkheads and siphon and left exposed wood. That's where the rot started on the old beds. When I drill the holes this time, I waterproof the exposed wood, reducing the risk of rot. Before I drill, I want to make sure the bed is watertight. Any leaks should show up now and we can fix them before I drill and we add the finish to the exterior of the bed. We filled the bed with water. We're going to let it sit for the day and see if it develops any leaks. There are no leaks in the grow bed. It is watertight. Now I break the seal because I have to install the bell siphon, the weep holes, and the overflow. For that, I have to drill holes in the bed but I'll coat the exposed areas with the resin mix and that should seal the cuts I made. I do a dry fit for the fixtures, the bell siphon, the weep hole, the overflow, and then apply the resin. I'm using acid brushes here because they're small and they make the job easier. We'll also need to paint the exterior of the grow bed. I used a matte spray paint for this and painted only the exterior of the bed. Before the bed goes back onto the stand while the paint dries, I'll install the plumbing. I run a pipe through the supports built into the stand. The water is pumped up from the pond into the pipe. I have this size barb because I want to put in about a 200 gallon an hour pump. But I, right now I'm using a 500 which has a bigger barb so I can change this out. And this will be actually like that. The water, now rich in nutrients, travels the length of the pipe and up to the input for the bed. 
I included a control valve along the pipe near this end to help regulate the flow. The nutrient rich solution empties into the bed. The plants take up the nutrients and the water now free from fish poop is released into the pond for the fish to enrich all over again. Now that the bed is on the stand and over the pond, I'll connect to the pump which draws the water up into the pipe and travels to the input for the bed. We emptied the grow beds and removed them, along with the plumbing. We painted the outside of the fish pond and hooked up a DIY filter. Next came construction. I built the stand and then the grow bed. We painted the stand and worked on the grow bed. The first layer of resin included fiberglass, on top of which I applied a second coat of resin. The bed passed the water test and then we painted. It was time to drill out the bulkheads and add the new plumbing. I have three bulkheads. The first one I added a standpipe. I put a hood over it and it turns into a bell siphon. The bell siphon returns the water to the pond. You can learn more about how a bell siphon works in our video. There's a link in the description below. I put a shroud over the bell siphon so the clay pellets won't get into it. This bulkhead is for the weep hole. Think of it this is a small leak in the bed. If the pump stops working before the bell siphon is activated, the weep hole will allow the water to drain from the bed back into the pond. And I also put a shroud over that. This third bulkhead is the overflow. If the siphon fails to function, this prevents the bed from overflowing. The water returns to the pond. The fish pan now has a 200 gallon per hour pump. This pumps the fine water through a pipe underneath the bed and up to the spigot and then out into the bed. I've added a valve under here so I can adjust the flow. With the grow bed in place and the plumbing installed, we're now ready to add the clay pellets. What I thought was going to be a repair to the beds in our aquaponics systems turned into a redesign. We went from two beds to one while keeping just about the same amount of planting space. The plumbing is cleaner as well. One output, one bell siphon, and one weep hole. The pipes are all supported beneath the bed. We also positioned the system away from the walls allowing easier access to the fish pond, the plumbing, and the bed itself. We improved on the grow bed by using fiberglass to create this watertight box. The original problem, the issue that forced the redesign, was rot. We originally lined the beds with pond liner and they held up for about seven years. With this new bed, however, all exposed wood has been sealed with a resin coating. I applied a layer of fiberglass to the interior and then added resin and layers to the exterior of the bed. Working with fiberglass is messy and the resin has an unpleasant odor. I was happy when my wife said she preferred the textured surface. If you are after the smooth surface like that on a Corvette, you'll need to apply several layers of fiberglass sanding between each application until you achieve the look you want. Everything's in place. We took away the DIY filter we were using to make the new grow bed and the aquaponics system is now running on its own. The pond water full of nutrients is delivered to the bed via a pump and pipes. The plants take up the nutrients and the water drains from the bed. Clean water returns to the pond where it becomes nutrient rich solution thanks to the fish and the cycle starts again. This project required several weekends and a decent budget but as you can see the results are worth it. If you are considering a redesign or making a system for the first time, I hope this has inspired you and at least answered some of your questions. Thanks for watching.